What mistakes do you have to avoid as a Linux user, especially at the beginning? There are many questions that reach me on all kind of my channels on this topic. So first of all, congratulations on making the switch to Linux. But even if you have mentally decided to switch to Linux, congratulations on your decision. Now it's all about what mistakes you need to avoid. Let's get it started. Mistake number one. Do you have the right distro? There are two things. One is that you have to start with the right distro. You must not make yourself crazy. Start with an LTS distro. Use one of the big distros and not a small exotic one. If you want to switch sensibly and consistently, you only need the best distro. If you only use something semi-reliable, the whole thing could be doomed to failure. Secondly, this remains to the subject of the right distro. There are distros that are good for certain target groups. Good for hackers, analysts, musicians, etc. But now you need a distro that gives you security and stability in the rather critical phase of switching to Linux and also afterwards in the initial phase or during the first steps. You are switching the platform. That's challenge enough. If you now start with exotic or special distros, you are taking an enormous risk. Who is going to help you with your exotics in the event of an error? So you need a distro that works properly and has a large community that can help you in the event of a problem. Perhaps also freelancers that you can hire for money as a company, ideally also native speaking. So the question is always, which distro will you choose? It is suitable for a changeover and secondly, do you have already made a choice? Is it really the best decision? If you don't have the right distro here, then you will have to replace it. The biggest mistake is definitely that you have the wrong distro and then everything flies around your ears, especially if you are switching to Linux as a self-employed person or a company. The wrong distro can significantly disrupt the migration or even become a showstopper when a downtime window bursts, the whole project will blow up in your face. The same happens after a tedious migration when you realize that the chosen distro does not meet your requirements. Number two is a lack of expertise or half knowledge. From two points of view. The first is that you need sufficient expertise. When you plan to start the migration, you may run into an error or problem situation and the expertise suddenly takes a completely different significance at very short notice. And that's very problematic. Or to put it in another way, someone who is ill is only pursuing one goal. In contrast, a healthy person has numerous goals. You can apply this to the situation. If you have no specialist knowledge, then you only have one goal – to gain the necessary knowledge and expertise as quickly as possible. If you have enough expertise, you can take care of everything else. So make sure you have the right expertise. And expertise also means that it has to be acquired. If you make major leaps and changing platform is exactly that, then your expertise has to grow with the requirements. Don't be reactive. Don't run into mistakes and realize that knowledge is missing and then panic. Plan thoroughly in advance. You must be able to act quickly and professionally in an event of an error. Familiarize yourself with the subject matter and you will soon find out whether you or your team have the necessary expertise. However, as a company or self-employed person, you will not be able to avoid certain division of competences if your area of expertise is not be IT from now on. So depending on your start position, whether private or corporate, make sure you have the necessary expertise in advance. Mistake number three. Procedures and processes. If you are a small company, you have different processes than large companies and as a private individual, you don't have that anyway. It is important for companies. If an error occurs on a small scale, this small error scales up to a large scale. This applies to people, systems and entire companies. 
It is therefore important to always reflect on this yourself. Check your migration strategy. Have all points be considered. How will the data be backed up and transferred? How will the new Linux client be managed with as little effort as possible? Oh, and by the way, who will actually train the users on the new operating system and the new programs? Has it all been thought through? Is there a strategy here? This may not sound so important for private individuals, but if all your documents or holiday data are irrevocably deleted afterwards, you will assess the situation differently. It's a different world for companies anywhere. There are legal retention periods for certain documents. So regardless of whether you're a private individual or a company, check your procedures and processes. Scrutinize yourself. Reflect and correct where necessary so that quality always grows with you. Number four, your environment. Do you have the right environment? The environment you had before, perhaps the IT savvy person who always helped out, may no longer be the right person for you in the future. The person you started with may no longer be the person with whom you will be successful and grow afterwards. And that's perfectly fine. We talked about expertise in point two. We don't want to overwhelm anyone or drive them into burnout. With good preparations and the necessary resources built up, you have already taken the right steps in advance to find the right people who will contribute to your goals. Be it through personal development, freelancers, employee training or new hires in the company. So the fact is that your current environment, which may be fit for Windows or Mac OS, may no longer be able to help. Privately, this may be one IT acquaintance in the company at the IT department. Number five, and that's the last point and it's the most important point. You as a person, whether private or entrepreneur, must develop. The following order applies. Grow as a person. Then personal or entrepreneurial success will grow and then financial success or certification will grow. But first you have to develop yourself. So make sure that you have access to the right environment with people who are already farther ahead than you, who may also think bigger than you, perhaps even people who have already gone through the journey you are currently on or are still on it themselves. So the bottleneck can very quickly be you. If you get bogged down in micromanagement, you want to do everything yourself or You misjudge the situation because you don't have the right expertise and therefore make wrong decisions. So as I said, don't be the bottleneck that doesn't grow fast enough. And that's why the right environment is important for you Emmons. There are extremely large numbers of Linux communities and web forums or online groups. But there are also local Linux user groups that meet in person and there are companies and organizations that offer targeted Linux support and can also help. So, if you are now questioning what kind of distros you should use, then I personally would recommend you Ubuntu LTS, Linux Mint or LMDE. My name is Michael and I made a switch to Linux in the year 2003. I had to go through a huge learning phase and dry spell at the time. Today, things are much better and so I can only advise you, the time for a clean switch has never been better. Thank you for the kind attention, ladies and gentlemen. I wish you a good day. See you soon. Peace.